Good evening, what is happening YouTube? Thanks for stopping back here on the channel today, right here with the Rust Belt Mechanic. So today we are bringing you a technician review special of the brand new 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee L, the Summit Edition. This thing's loaded, decked out. We're gonna bring you the technician's view of everything that this Jeep has to offer, not just the car and driver perspective. So let's see and jump in on this one. Now, first off in this 2021 Grand Cherokee L, we've got it in the blacked out Summit Edition, and it is decked out with pretty much every single bell and whistle that you could think of through Chrysler. On the outside, it's got the new grille. It's got all the new front fascia, the newest styling that Chrysler has to offer. Uh, in my mind, the front headlights kind of give a little look to what the Durango has, kind of an upgraded thing from there, mixed between that and what the Jeep Cherokee had to offer as well. Getting down into the new styling down the side of the Jeep, their body lines that they went to for this more of extended chassis, uh, I think they did a really good job in following right underneath the window line as well as keeping the trim nice and low centered there. The next great feature that this has is going to be your passive entry pretty much at any point of the vehicle. If you don't know what passive entry is, it's the availability to lock, unlock the doors with just having the key fob right inside of your pocket. You can see the turn signals and everything are in the mirror as well as underneath here you're going to see the camera for the rest of the 360 degree view cameras which we will look at on the interior of this before we jump to the inside we can kind of look into the window sticker the baseline on this jeep was going to be 58 but with all of the options that this one has you're looking at right around 66,275. This Grand Cherokee L is decked out with the latest Palermo uh, leather seats. Interior color is going to be Tupelo and black. So I guess this brown would be what they call Tupelo. And it has the gridded cross stitch in just about every place. It is super nice, super fancy. The seats are just next generation and what we're looking for in comfort level and styling for this one these seats have so many different functions right now that i'm not even used to this one this is going into like the euro style seats where look here even in the front we can extend or retract the front of the seat to make the seat have more or less support for your lower legs electric functions for this one we've got the lower back here this is going to take care of all of the cushioning in the back as well as your normal forward and backward functions for the back forward and backward up up down down very nice on that one now here first we're going to look at seeing our massage seat function this is the single button that's going to turn it on and off and then here in the radio, we have all kinds of dialed in functions for the seats as well. So we're gonna turn it on and we're gonna see how this thing is functioning with our massage seats. It's going up and across. We can see it extending all the way up to the top. Oh, this feels, oh, that's crazy. Oh, waterfall. Oh, this is nice. Sorry, you guys might have to hold off a little bit on this video. This is like one of the nicest seats I've ever sat in from Chrysler here. Your front HVAC functions. Of course, these things do have heated and ventilated seats. Three levels of each one of them. The technicians like to call this one the anti-swamp-ass seats. Excuse my French on that one, but that's the technical term I'm going to say for us techs. Now, here in the radio, also the newest upgraded radio that Chrysler has to offer. When they merged with Stellantis, they brought a whole bunch of these extra, really cool electric options to the whole gambit. Uh, this is gonna have your auto stop start, which you can turn off. Most people hate that one, so yes, you can turn that off. Park assist, park assist on and off. And this one does have the function to be able to park you as well. 
parallel perpendicular and parallel parking exit, this vehicle will automatically do that. Looking down here into the center console, we do have an automatic charging pad, which is oversized to fit pretty much any of the extra large cell phones. Four auxiliary ports here for charging and or connectivity into the Uconnect radio, as well as an old school aux cable jack as well. 12 volt DC, and then all of your selections for your air ride height and our four wheel drive selection here as well. And here is how you kind of raise and lower the vehicle. We'll put it down into our center function for when we go for our test drive. All in all, super nice vehicle. I think that all of the little buttons and doodads that you can kind of get to from the driver's perspective are just, there's almost too much to do here. <laughs> there really is, unfortunately, but you know what? That's what a lot of these people want, and that's what they're going to get. Driver seat wise, I am six foot four inches tall, and this seat is all the way back right now, and you can still see that I have a good that much distance between my knee and the dash as well as the dash being spaced out far enough to give me enough leg room on the sides as well. So for a bigger person, this is definitely gonna be an awesome, awesome ride. Now stereo system wise, this Jeep is equipped with the Macintosh full surround system. And the amount of audio connectivity that this has is really nice. Bluetooth into the Android Auto as well as Apple CarPlay and the sound that comes out of this vehicle is unmatched to any other at least Chrysler product that I've ever heard. Let's look into the upper console section here. This is one of the things that I'm not sure I'm a big fan about in Chrysler world yet. This is the video style rear view camera. Uh, trying to keep guys from you know looking back and not having a whole lot of sight room because you've got all the headrests and what might be in the way of your vision you can see a camera directly out the back on the top we've got our center upper console to be able to open our trunk our auto uh, door locks turn our interior lights on and off with the doors and then everything for our big panoramic style or oversized style sunroof here it is uh goes back half the length of the vehicle with a divider section into the middle and then a center section that opens up as well lots of light lots of sun that all the passengers can be able to see you can tilt vent open up your sunroof just as pretty much normal every other sunroof vehicle has all right, so I set the driver's front seat at my normal riding position, and now I'm gonna hop into the rear seat and see how much room that I've got. All right, not gonna lie, it's a little on the cramped side on the left-hand side at the door with my legs, but as far as forward and backwards goes, even if there's a six foot four driver, I've still got knee room and able to uh, move all of my knees and everything here. In the back, you've got full functional HVAC control. And look at this, you've got heated and air conditioned seats in the rear too. Boy guys, when I talk about a bougie vehicle for a Jeep, this is a bougie vehicle. Here you can see we're gonna back the vehicle up and the 360 degree view where it stitches together everything that's around you let's back up to a vehicle and kind of see what that looks like on the 360. getting there getting there there you go you can see it backs up to it and it puts up a little yellow indicator and we've got an audio beep as well telling us hey dummy you need to get away from this thing all right let's put this thing up on a rack here but what else is really cool is i want you guys to see the night vision camera all right there we go there's our night vision you can see this in front of us and anytime somebody walks across you can see their heat vision kind of come out now while the vehicle is also moving i would point out that when a person kind of walks in front of the camera it's going to have like a little yellow kind of 
uh, square around it. That's pretty cool as well to be able to see. And of course, everything's gonna have dimmed down. We wanna be able to see what we're looking at. But the night vision on this thing is just next level. I love to see how this thing works. You can see somebody else walking across there. <laughs> I love that function. Now let's get into what everybody really wants to know is what are the maintenance costs going to be here on the Grand Cherokee L? So for your oil change, like I said, it's gonna take the normal 349 filter and six quarts of zero W20. If you purchase it yourself, you're looking at about 60 bucks in supplies to be able to do that oil change yourself. Do it in a dealership, you're gonna definitely be upwards of hundred bucks or so to do a synthetic oil change here at the dealer. Now, how about those goofy sized tires, those 21 inch tires? If you go with just the standard Continental Contact Pros that come on this vehicle, they're gonna end up running you 375 bucks a tire right now. That's kind of crazy, but when you're looking at that goofy size, yep, that's what you're gonna be looking at. Some other small maintenance things just to keep in mind. Uh, wiper blades, they're not gonna be anything weird. Even with Mopar ones, they're gonna cost you like 23 bucks a piece on those. And the air filter comes in right at $36. So nothing goofy or weird on those ones. Kind of like when I reviewed the Wrangler diesel, the filters on that one were just outrageous. They were super proud of those and just kind of stupid to replace. So maintenance wise, some things are really expensive, but other things, you know, just normal maintenance things are pretty cost effective. Now, how about the brakes on this one? If you guys are looking down the road, maybe getting out of warranty on this thing eventually, the brakes, now those are gonna be a little bit costly as well. We're gonna be looking at the front pads alone are gonna cost you $282. Ooh, for pads, I mean, these aren't Brembo's guys. These are just regular pads. The front rotors are 156 bucks a piece right now. If you're doing the rears, $200 for pads and 130 bucks a piece for the rotors. Not too bad on the rears, I guess, but those pads, whew, they are kind of ridiculous for those for standard factory pads. And aftermarket, of course, right now, they don't have anything in the aftermarket when it comes to these new Grand Cherokee Ls. You're not seeing those yet. I'm sure down the line you'll see them, but right now you're forced to purchase any kind of the Mopar parts on those, and they are pricey. Now for the part you've all been waiting for. Open up, see what's underneath the hood. Now this one is going to be, like I said, the 3.6 liter option. This is the tried and true, the newest update to the Pentastar motor right here. Now let's get under this engine cover to give you guys a look what's underneath. Of course, the Milwaukee Stubby 3.8 is the tool of choice on today's review. Now, the thing that I'm noticing first off as a technician is that this motor is tucked way back in under the firewall and we've got about 10 inches of open room in front of the engine. Yeah, I know they wanna keep the center of gravity in towards the center of the vehicle, but boy, this makes it a pain in the butt for technicians to work on. All right, let's hop underneath of here, and as I thought, we are probably not gonna be able to see a whole lot without taking a bunch of things apart. The under shielding and cladding is covered with all of the sound deadening and road noise deadening material here under the vehicle. It's almost like this uh, cloth cardboard style covering to be able to keep all the road noise down. So the only thing that you're really able to see here is gonna be the transfer case. And we see that we've got a lot of NVH, uh, extra weights kind of added to it to keep the vibrations and everything down, the automatic shift transfer case it looks like a much weirder motor than i'm not used to seeing here on this one probably the shift control sensor there and more nvh weights bolted all the way around the tail housing right there kind of a different transfer case not seeing one that anywhere looks like that one uh, we are running the eight speed transmission in this vehicle so that one has been around a bit and it is upgraded for the cooling lines are all there and the manual release lever for the park function. Here on the brakes, they look simple enough to be able to service. Looks like you got 13s to take off the caliper 
and e torx bolts to pull off your caliper brackets probably a 20 21 right right around there for your e torx bolts uh, normal independent lower suspension two individual uh, wishbones for the forward and your centering arm here that connects to the little arm that goes around to the upper shock so all very nice and serviceable not any kind of hollow aluminum parts these are all looks like heavy duty cast aluminum on all of these suspension parts they, so they look really beefy i like to see that now getting into the rear area you do see that our standard exhaust does y into two different outputs comes out around the spare and to its own uh, little resonator muffler here on the end the big muffler is a single muffler right there in the middle at the front and then they come out to duels on the rear that go around the donut spare tire no we do not have a full size spare on this one um, yes this is a 18 inch spare tire but it is not the full size 21 inch wheel and it is just a steely so yep it is there i guess it's not really a donut but it is it isn't a, a full regular spare uh independent rear suspension got your electric locking differential got the motor located here those are usually pretty pricey and you can see our electronic dampening suspension this is new on the chrysler products as well haven't really seen those or any issues with any of these newer ones yet but I'm betting that these shocks are going to be really pricey also. Uh, the newer upgraded axles, I heard that they went through those, and those are new and upgraded. And then, of course, the big old airbag suspension that are nitrogen filled in the nitrogen system. All right, what do you say we get going for a test drive in this bad old Johnny? Now, I already like the Grand Cherokee platforms. Don't get me wrong, they are luxury within itself in the SUV uh, kind of arena. If you've driven some of the newer body style Grand Cherokees, I'm talking anything like 2012, 2014 and newer, you know that that independent suspension, the drivetrain that they use is pretty high rated. In fact, they usually tend to get really really high ratings when it comes to any kind of automotive review for the uh the at home kind of guys they're just like oh it rides so nice and it, it does some jeep stuff now this is not going to do jeep stuff like a freaking wrangler will just because it has a jeep badge it does not mean that you're gonna go kind of drudging through creek beds or anything crazy like that it's just it's not gonna happen now this jeep going on really long road trips with the family and being able to go off road say like in the hills of tennessee or being able to get through the beaches down uh, on the east coast like the outer banks which i love to go on this jeep is going to be super capable for that one now some of my favorite things while driving this after i've been driving this for about half hour 45 minutes right now the heads-up display does not only have just the speedometer put up onto the screen, it also has some of the navigation-based things as well, where it's keeping the speed limit of the road that you're on as well as the name of the road that you're on. If you put in a navigation uh, kind of a destination into it, then it's going to pop up where your next turn and everything is going to be at as well. I really like seeing that in the heads-up display. Now some of the negatives that I might have to say while driving this uh, is just some little finicky things. Uh, for instance, the lane departure on this vehicle, it's a little bit touchy. Yes, there is different standards at which you can set it at, whether it's just the indicator that comes up or whether it actually tries to steer you back into the center like it's kind of doing here and there. But it's a little bit touchy in the way of the forward facing camera sometimes it sees some of the lines sometimes it doesn't it's not really dialed in like some of the other gm vehicles that i'm used to driving now software wise that might be some kind of an issue that i haven't looked into yet but i just feel that the forward facing camera doesn't have 
the vision capability that it really needs to have. Now some of the other functions uh, with your adaptive cruise control, that one works really well. I haven't had or seen any kind of issues while driving with that one. Uh, I like all of the audio that I can hear with the sound system. The steering wheel controls are very nice as well, easy functioning. Uh, the responsiveness of the engine uh, is okay. Uh, again, this one just being the 3.6 liter, yes, it does have a lot of the umph and the go. They do have 300 horsepower in these 3.6 liters, 300 plus horsepower to be able to handle, so it's not horrible, but I really like to see the summits with the Hemi. I'm just a big fan of being able to have all that torque that a big V8 has to it. Uh, probably going to have a little bit more weight, so when going around some of these corners, it's going to, you know, be a little bit more rolling, but I'm not finding that right now in this version of the Grand Cherokee. Well, that's about the end of the test drive here, and hopefully this gave you guys some insight into the new 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee L. This is pretty much one of the highest option Jeeps that they have available. Like I said, the only thing that this one lacking that I would like to see was the big Hemi, but we're getting into the new Jeep Grand Wagon years that are gonna be coming out. I'm really, really excited to be able to see that one. I'm excited to see the interior plush nature of this Grand Cherokee L sitting on a truck chassis with a big 6.4 liter Hemi in it. Oh man, I'm all excited just thinking about that one. So you guys better stay tuned in for that one. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on that bell notification so you get notified when I come out with great, awesome content just like this one here today. Thanks for tuning in and as always, you guys stay awesome. bonus round favorite thing of this Grand Cherokee massaging anti-swamp ass seats oh this is so nice <laughs> oh yeah if you guys did want to pick up this specific Grand Cherokee they're kind of hard to find or anything I do work at a dealership in Ohio and I will put the link to where you can find it down in the description below